track, there have been 11 straight Insider Weeklies. That's a record for Paul not snapping. <laughs> next up, Wednesday night, there will not be a show next Wednesday. Instead, Minnesota Morris will come to town to play UND men's basketball. And head coach Brian Jones is in the coach's corner to talk about that game, preview the rest of the season. It's really not a corner. You're in the middle, Brian. That's right. Welcome to the show. Well, thank you for having me. You've been walking back and forth every Basically. show we have, and now finally you get to sit down. Sort of. I want to do the stairway thing in the back, you know, <laughs> be a distraction in the back. But yeah, it's, uh, this is quite a setup. It's exciting. It's uh, another step in the right direction in our Division One move and just continue to brand our product. So thanks for doing this. Uh, all right, Coach, i got to ask you, women's basketball, they get a couple exhibition games. They're going to have a couple more games before men's basketball even kicks off the season. Yeah, you get nothing. Yeah, what, what's going on here? Uh, what's up with the scheduling? We're well, not ready to play one, are you? Oh, I'm not. No way. Okay. Uh, well, we've done some private scrimmage. We felt on uh, on our side, the men's side, if you, the private scrimmage, you can conscript them a little bit more, um, work on maybe some zone off and some things that you want to work at, whereas exhibition, it's re it really is like a game, but as, as, as coaches, well, we need to work on some out-of-bounds unders. We need to work on some zone defense or pressing offense. So the scrimmages allow you to do those things, and, and it's been good for us. We've had two private ones. We've played well. We're not uh, – offensively, we're, we're pretty good right now, but def defensively, we're not where we need to be. Um, and I think that has to do with a lot of uh, still guys learning the front-line position where our, where our new faces are at. You've been selected in a lofty spot in the Big Sky Conference. Uh, well, you earned that last year at the, in the playoffs, I guess, in the tournament. Huh? Well, we, whether we've earned it or not, I, I, I guess I'm, I'm happy for our guys to uh, be year two just to get recognition. that They've had a long journey uh, of earning their way, but they can't lose sight of those things. I, I'm big on that. We've, we've always had a chip on our shoulders. We've been an underdog. Don't lose sight of that because that's been our recipe for success. Uh, that's allowed us to compete and, and you know, now we're not sneaking up on anybody. We got expectations. We have a target on our back. So that's the next step. That's the next chapter. Can we handle that? And, and that's what I'm excited to see with older guys, but they've never been in that situation before. So what were they going to do about it this season? On the posters, don't really know maybe what to expect from you guys. It seems to be a strange makeup you guys have of a ton of seniors, but also a lot of guys that people don't know too much about, maybe Jerron Nash. Uh, and others? Yeah, it's uh, some of our guys have been red, uh, have redshirted in our program, been with us, but they haven't actually been in games. So, uh, you know, that's to me the faces of the guards they know, but our front line uh, are all new. Even with Alonzo Trailer only playing in a handful of games, uh, he still did not show uh, his true ability. So that's they, as they progress and as they mature and, and get comfortable in what we're doing on both sides of the ball, that will show you our growth as a program. Because everybody, as I mentioned before, everybody knows Troy, Jamal, Aaron, even Josh Shuler to an extent, and Lenny. Uh, not a lot of people know about these new guys and for our growth and for our success, uh, our front line is going to have to step up and, and make their presence felt. Brian, I remember when you came in talking about how at a mid-major situation, you weren't going to get the star players that the Kentuckys and people like that were going to go. So you had to build, and you wanted to have teams of seniors, fifth-year seniors in some cases, fourth-year seniors and juniors that were mature. And now you're pretty much there, aren't you? We are, yeah. And, and, I, and I definitely I still stand by that. I think at our level, you're winning with 22, 23-year-old men, not 18-year-old guys, where uh, the BCS level, uh, with the talent that they get, you're, you can do that. But with us, it's, it's the guys who uh, stay with you, who mature, who are maybe a little slight in body or shorter than mature late, or maybe their game is just, uh, uh, they're an inch too short. I mean, it, it, there's a lot of things out there, but they're still talented. And, and as we saw last year, we won with four guards. So we're, our ability to win with talented guards and undersized players happens at this level. It's really tough to do that at the big level. And I, 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 we're going to continue to recruit that way and want to win with older guys. I, that's why I think the Montanas and the Weavers are consistently good because they're constantly winning with older guys. Brian, wish you the best of luck against Minnesota Morris and the rest of the way. Thanks Thank for you. coming out. Coach Brian Jones of the end of men's basketball.